In this chapter, we will focus on techniques used in the laboratory to study DNA and RNA. You will become familiar with techniques used to isolate and purify DNA, how DNA is sequenced and synthesized, some of the major bioinformatic tools used to analyze genome sequences, the fundamentals of DNA cloning and recombinant protein expression, as well as microarrays and in situ hybridization techniques. In this first section, we will cover DNA isolation techniques, sequencing, and synthesis. Genomic DNA is chromosomal DNA in contrast to extra chromosomal DNA, such as that found in mitochondria of mammals or in plasmid structures in bacteria. Plasmids will be discussed in more detail when we learn about cloning and recombinant expression. The techniques used to isolate DNA are different if you're planning to isolate genomic DNA or something much smaller, such as plasmid DNA. Furthermore, genomic DNA from eukaryotic cells will contain all of the intron sequences within it. Thus, it is often quite difficult to work with directly. It's more common to want to use complementary DNA or cDNA especially if you're planning on doing a cloning experiment. cDNA is DNA that's synthesized from a strand of messenger RNA. This reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme called reverse transcriptase. Reverse transcriptase is an enzyme that's found in retroviruses, such as HIV, that have RNA as their core genetic material. Upon entering the host cell, the RNA is reverse transcribed to produce a copy of cDNA that can then integrate into the host genomic DNA. In biotechnology, reverse transcriptase is often used to create cDNA from the messenger RNA expressed in a specific cell or tissue. In this way, eukaryotic genes can be cloned without any introns. Depending on one's needs, there are three major ways of isolating both DNA and RNA depending on what you want to accomplish. They are ethanol precipitation, phenylchloroform extraction, and mini column purification. Note that special care must be taken when working with RNA. It is much more labile than DNA and will often degrade very easily. Thus, it often requires working with samples on ice and requires the use of RNase inhibitors to prevent degradation. Large nucleic acid molecules are insoluble in ethanol, especially at a concentration of 70%. Precipitation is increased by the addition of sodium acetate to help increase the ionic strength of the solution. It's often used when cleaning DNA samples in between reaction steps, especially if the buffer needs to be changed from one reaction to the next. It's usually not sufficient to purify DNA from a cellular extract, although crude extracts can be prepared this way. Phenylchloroform is a very efficient liquid-liquid separation technique used to purify genomic DNA or RNA samples. In fact, DNA and RNA can be separated from each other by using different pHs of the aqueous layer. However, these solvents are quite toxic and have given way to mini column purification techniques, which are often much faster, safer, and can produce highly purified samples. Spin column based nucleic acid purification is a solid phase extraction method that quickly purifies nucleic acids. This method relies on the fact that nucleic acid will bind to the solid phase of silica under certain conditions and then is released when those conditions are altered. For binding, a buffer solution is added to the DNA lysate along with ethanol or isopropanol. This forms the binding solution and is transferred to the spin column. The column is put into a centrifuge. The centrifuge then forces the binding solution to move through the column. 
The nucleic acid will bind to the silica gel membrane as the solution passes through. To wash nonspecific cellular components from the column, the flow through is removed and a wash buffer is added to the column. The column is then placed in the centrifuge again, forcing the wash buffer through. This removes any remaining impurities from the membrane, leaving only the nucleic acid bound to the column. To elute, the wash buffer is removed and a low salt elution buffer, or simply water, is added to the column. The column is put into the centrifuge again, forcing the elution buffer through the membrane. The elution buffer will displace the DNA from the column, allowing it to be collected in the flow through. These are the three major methods of DNA isolation that are most commonly used. In the next section, we will visit DNA sequencing methods.